Greetings everyone and welcome to this video on output for meta-analysis in JASP. Building on the previous two videos, we will now proceed to explore the output in JASP. In the previous video, we have obtained some initial results and have seen the input options. We have also seen the main differences between the fixed effects model and the random effects model. The first table, as we can see in the right part of the screen, summarizes the significance of the effect sizes. The omnibus test of the model coefficients tests the null hypothesis that all of the coefficients in the second table are zero. The second line tests the null hypothesis that all the effect sizes in the studies are all equal. That is, it tests for the homogeneity of effect sizes. In this case, both are highly significant with p-values less than 0.001 refuting the null hypothesis of no effect and the hypothesis of homogeneity. The latter implies that the role of violent video games on the average number of violent episodes in one year differs across studies. That is, there is heterogeneity of effect sizes. The latter suggests that the fixed effects model is not an appropriate model to summarize the data and a better description would result from a random effects model a model with moderators or a mixed effects model. However, its inference can still be useful as it indicates that it is safe to conclude that the average of the effect sizes of the current set of studies is not equal to zero. The second table shows the estimated coefficients for the effect fixed effects along with a test of their significance. Here, only an intercept is included the reported coefficient of which is the meta-analytic estimate of the overall effect size, this overall simple effect size of the combined studies. A weighted average of the effect size estimates in which the weight of each study is the precision of the effect size estimate, that is the inverse squared standard error. The z-test of the coefficient in this case merely confirms the omnibus test in the first table. Further, since the 95% confidence intervals also do not cross zero in this table, the null hypothesis of no effect is refuted once again. The forest plot is an important plot in a meta-analysis which will be explained in greater detail in the following video. Since the fixed effect analysis of this set of data does not provide an accurate summary of the current data set because this analysis ignores excess variance in the effect sizes that cannot be attributed to sampling error. A simple way to do more justice to our data is to provide an estimate of the excess variance. This is often denoted as tau squared and it turns out that this excess variance also affects the weight of each study. The uh, weight of each study which should be included in a meta-analysis. An estimate of this tau squared and the weight adjusted metaanalytic effect size estimates are obtained <clears throat> by selecting the random effects uh, model. This can be done in JASP by selecting any other option other than the fixed effects option. JAS by default sets the model to a restricted maximum likelihood model. So we will proceed to use the same model. The key difference with the fixed effect analysis that is that we get a third table uh, of the residual heterogeneity estimates that gives uh, the aforementioned estimate of tau squared right here along with some other metrics that have been found to be useful characterizations of the excess variance. For instance, the I squared that we see here describes the percentage of the variability in effect estimates that is due to heterogeneity rather than sampling error and hence is akin to an intra-class correlation. The funnel plot which we can see here is used for the assessment of publication bias. Along with the forest plot, this has been explained in greater detail in the following video. Funnel plot asymmetry can be formally tested <clears throat> with a non-parametric rank test or the parametric regression test also known as Eggler's test right here. In both cases low p-values are indicative of asymmetry 
and by extension are taken as an evidence for publication bias. Coming to the diagnostics drop down option, the fail safe, safe in estimates the number of zero finding studies needed to add to the list of studies in order to bring the currently observed significance of the meta analytic effect size to a significant level of alpha equal to 0.05. <clears throat> Here the fail safe n is equal to 2280, which we can see right here, indicating that these many studies with study effect size equal to zero would have to be added to the meta analysis in order to bring the observed significance back to an alpha value of 0 0.05. The trim and fill tries to add missing studies by adding points that will ma make the funnel plot symmetric as we can see right here indicated by this black dot. The added points are then included in the current analysis to adjust the parameter estimates in an attempt to mitigate the influence of publication bias. Here, the trim and fill analysis doesn't change much of the results because the funnel plot uh, is not found to be asymmetric right here. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.